Class is in session. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Unlearn 16 Classes in Session. Uh, guys, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about tonight because today is February 12th. I know you guys are going to be hearing this on February 13th. Now, why did I leave it to the last minute to record? Because the weekend was insane, folks. Absolutely insane. My life has been um, a little a little on the crazy side, a little on the busy side. But today, everything slowed right down because today is my grandma's birthday. <clears throat> so I got up this morning. I didn't really think about it. I went to school and as the date sort of starts coming up, I start recognizing what day it is and you start to have that feeling in the pit of your stomach that ranges from sadness to anger to guilt to grief to um, an emptiness. And I know I've already done a podcast about my grandmother. For those of you who don't know, my grandma Ruby and I were very, very close. Um, and I'm going to tell you some stories about her tonight <clears throat> in hopes of making me feel better, to be honest. I hope you guys enjoy it. But I feel like this podcast might be my own therapy. I talk about politics and whatever. I feel like my grandma, my dad, like whatever I need to talk, my divorce to, to feel better. But um, so as today progressed, you just you're sort of overwhelmed with a lot of this stuff. And it, it was funny because Christmas I thought was going to be harder, but what I remember about Christmas, missing her, not her not being here, she didn't really like Christmas. There's so many people around her, so many things going on. My grandma like quiet. So her birthday, I think, made me take a big step back because on her birthday, we would have had the food she liked. We would have spoiled her. We would have tried to buy her something that she didn't want. We would have gone to the casino. We would have done all of these things. And it probably would have just been me and my mom, maybe Anna, and maybe my uncle Ray and low key, right? And that's what she would have loved. And today, sort of quietly, I tried to remind myself of all of the beautiful things we did and who she was, and what I got to experience, because nobody else, I, like, I don't know, but, like, I don't think her other, we were, we were closer than anybody else, in my opinion, um, so I've had a lot of years, I mean, when I was really little, my mom was a nurse, my parents got to, my grandma looked after me, people would think that I was her daughter, I think she might have played it off a little bit, too, right, and we were that close. Um, I would, I, I was, when I was very young, like that's where I spent most of my time, you know, until she started telling me things like virgins were people that weren't married anymore. <laughs> that I should go to school. And my grandma could be gruff. Okay. She was British. She was gruff. You didn't, Older grandma, you'd hear more I love yous. Younger grandma, you'd hear more, get over, get out of here, go on, let's go. Like, she just, she just wasn't that kind of grandma. My grandma's never baked a thing. I, <laughs> not a thing here. in her entire life. My grandpa did all the cooking, all the cooking. If there was baking to be done, my grandpa did it. My grandma did not. My grandma, um, would when I was little, I remember she cook cook. Is this such a ridiculous word? She toast, make me toast with butter and marmite with the crust cut off. Like I, I have a like a visceral memory. I'm a, a smell memory. Now marmite is strong of what that would look like and what kind of plate it was on. And that was when I was like, guys, like younger than four. I remember her letting me watch action movies way too young. And I mean like bad action, you know, all the series. My grandma's favorite movies were like Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. And she loved Sean Connery and she loved, you know, Action Jackson. She loved all these, these movies in the eighties. And I was a bit older, you know, um, I remember her singing. I remember she had this gruff voice. My grandma always had this gruff voice, like gravelly. She should have been like a lounge singer. Now she did smoke incessantly, so that makes sense. But 
she always would sing, but she'd always be in tune with this gravelly kind of kind of voice. And it was funny because at some point the doctor found that she had poly- <laughs> polyps on her throat. They weren't anything bad, of course, because my grandma lived to 97, smoking cigarettes, eating sugar, and living off coffee. I've never seen her. I never saw her eat a vegetable. And she never, she had high blood pressure, which I think is genetic, and that's it. Arthritis. And that's it. Lived to 97. Old age. That was it, right? So for all those people who are like, smoking kills, just not her. Um, but she had these polyps on her throat. So the doctor said, listen, they're, bu- they're irritating, obviously. We're going to remove them. So she went in for the surgery. And when they removed them, she came out, guys. I wish I had video of this. The more, it's so funny because I have all these videos of her later in life. This is because when I started taking video, right? And I'm just like, oh, all those years I could have. Anyways, they removed the polyps, guys. She sounded like Minnie Mouse. She was so angry at the sound of her (laughs) voice. She would just, she'd be like, I sound ridiculous. And it would be way up here and it would be no gruffness. And that lasted for a few years. And eventually they just grew back. And she says, I'm keeping them. I like my voice this way. I am keeping them. They're not going to kill me. It's I can breathe fine. It's 100% fine. But I remember her singing a lot. She also has an, had an organ for, for my entire life. I can remember her playing the organ. And I have that organ in my classroom at school now. I have a student who's trying desperately to learn and do YouTube videos in order to fix it, which is just beautiful. Um, so I remember her playing on that. There's not a single other person in our family that has any musical talent. Zero. None. Um, but she did love to play that organ. Would teach all her grandkids, right? Um, I started having my first coffees with my grandma. Listen, you do what you can do to make connections. She'd have a regular coffee. I'd have a little bit of coffee and then milk and a boatload of sugar. But I mean, that was the time you got to spend with her. She never got up early. My grandma, my grandma was asleep in queen. She'd be up till late, but she wouldn't get up before like 10, 11. That's just who she was. It's the way her body worked, the way her mind worked. When I was at university and I had any quite, because back in the day, I didn't have the internet. Side note. And back in the day, I would get stuck on words. I was never a great speller. And I'd get stuck on words and I'd know it wasn't spelt right, but I couldn't even get close enough, heaven help me, to find it in the dictionary. So I'd pick up the phone at midnight at 1 a.m., which didn't happen often. Guys, I wasn't a night owl. I'd call her, it doesn't matter. Grandma, uh, how do you spell this? And she'd spell it. I'd be like, okay. She goes, are you good? I'm like, I'm good. Okay, night. That was it. Her and I never had a single moment of pretense. You know what that's like? You know what it's like to have another person in your life? Now, okay, wait. Some people are going to say, but you didn't tell her you were gay until later. Uh, Understood. Understood? Yes, there was that. That was a big thing. But what I mean is there was never, there was always an authenticity. There was always an authenticity to our time together. If we wanted to watch TV, we watched TV. If we wanted to make something to eat, she'd make me something to eat. She'd ask me to do this. I'd ask her to do that. If I wanted to go buy shopping, she'd come out and go shopping. There, there wasn't a moment where we felt I could sit in the most comfortable of silences with that woman um, or talk about nothing or play Scrabble or she wasn't a big board game fan, guys. Um, she hated games, actually. We used to try to make her play games at Christmas and stuff, and she'd always get so bad because she'd lose, and then she, she's such a bad loser. This one time we tried to play Hum Zingers, <laughs> a game where you get the name of the song and you have to hum it, every house to guess it. <laughs> I wish I'd film it. I wish I filmed all of it because we're so bad. It was really hard. Because nobody in our family could sing. Now, grandma could sing, but she didn't know how to hum. She didn't know how to hum. I don't know what. La, so she'd do this. La, la, la. Elvis Presley. What? 
and then we'd laugh and it would be hilarious. Then she'd think we were laughing at her that she didn't want to play anymore. My grandma, grandma always left the house dressed to the nines. She always looked great. Always jewelry on point, hair done. She smelled like Nivea. You guys know what that that cream, that Nivea cream smells like? I can ne- I can't get past it. I should just get some so I could smell it. Because that memory has the greatest receptor. She was proud. <clears throat> really, really, really proud. And I think sometimes that pride got in the way of her saying how she felt. And I wish there could have been more moments where a long time ago where she could have just said what she felt and if she was scared or if she was sad or if she was nervous or anxious. You know, we have a whole culture now where everybody has anxiety, everybody talks about it. I think grandma, my grandma had ulcers. I think she battled internally forever. I know a lot of people did it for, forever. But in retrospect, I just wish she talked about it more so that I knew her more. One of her favorite movies was My Fair Lady. I learned, we watched that movie together so many times. I I know every single line and every single song. I remember she'd sit on her bed and crochet. Guys, we have so much crocheted. If anybody wants a bedspread. She'd sit on her bed and crochet. And it wasn't ever to do, nobody wanted the crocheted thing. You know, nobody wants, it doesn't matter. That was the thing that gave my grandma purpose in that moment. So she had something to do externally to just whatever it else, watching TV or watching movies. Um, we used to, when I was young, we, me, my mom, my grandma, my grandpa, my two uncles were going to university at the time, but we all, all lived in, and my mom, and my grandparents owned this 120-year-old general store with this giant house on top of it. So for a few years, we all lived together. Now, running a business with your with your family, I guess for my mom, was it the, the best, easiest thing in the world? My mom, my grandma always got along really well. My mom, my grandpa were very similar, so they fought a lot. They both thought that they knew how to run the business and yada, 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 but you know, my mom, my grandma, my, my grandma was so proud that she ran. She was the postmaster. She talks about that. She talked about that in, until she, in, she was 97. Like, cause she, she also did in England, I think. She talked about that she was in the Wrens in England, which is like a, you know, women that who, who served. She never really gave a story. I never really got a story. You know, I, I, as, as a person of my age now, it's like, You want to know all those little caveats and stories and pieces. And when I was 20 and stupid, I just didn't ask. Just wasted it. You know, I drove to Florida with my mom and my grandma probably 16 times. Do you know how long that drive is? And we stop every five minutes to go to the bathroom for my grandma to, you know, get out and have a cigarette. I lie. They, my mom and grandma used to smoke all the way down there. But nonetheless, my mom would go to the bathroom every five seconds. We'd get out and shop. It would take us five days to drive down there. My mom also, we'd drive to Memphis because my mom said it was on the way. For those who know geography, that was a blatant lie. And I'd spend all my money by Syracuse. And my grandma would get so mad because she'd know that it's not like my my money's all spent, but now she knows that my mom and my grandma are going to, have to give me money for anything else I want. We'd have a fight just after Syracuse, my mom and my grandma, because my there used to be these triptychs where you where again, pre-internet, you go to CAA and they'd give you a map, but the map would be like a portion of the map on every piece of paper, then you could then flip like a giant notebook. And so my grandma's job was to be the navigator. You got my my grandma? I sometimes think, well, I know my grandma is a very, very smart woman. And I sometimes think not having a career didn't make her feel less because she was proud. But I feel like my grandma was very smart, very capable. And sometimes I feel like not having a career limited 
who she could conceive herself to be and what kind of things she could have accomplished. I don't, I'm not in any way demeaning what she chose to do and, and all of that. I just mean she, she wanted to, her whole life, I feel like she wanted to have control, power, and some degree of authority, not to be mean with it, but to feel filled by it, to have a purpose for it. So my mom would give her the triptych, okay? My grandma would tell her where to go. Now, sometimes it gets confusing. <laughs> my mom would get lost. And when my mom get lost, my mom would get mad at my grandma for not telling her to turn the right way. And my grandma said, I told you to turn the right way. And my mom says, well, let me see the thing. And my grandma says, I'm doing the navigating. My mom says, yeah, but you missed the thing. And then once every trip, my grandma would pitch it across the <laughs> car and say, you do it then. <laughs> every trip. If we went 16 years, guys, that happened 16 times in exactly the same order that I just described. You know, my grandma, grandpa got sick. My grandma just took care of him. I don't remember her ever complaining, ever. Not one time. She just did it. You know, he passed when I was like 25, 25 maybe. And, uh, 25 and in, in, I think in 2000 and, um, my grandma was by herself. So it was around that time that I got my first job and my mom decided to move up with my grandma and stay with her because my grandma didn't want to move out of her house. So she didn't want to move to my mom's house. So that was a thing, but my mom didn't want her to be alone and my mom was alone. Um, and so, you know, they moved in together. So I felt like they were taken care of. So I could kind of have this little beginning of my life where I didn't feel like anybody really needed, like my mom was good, taking care of my grandma. She was still working. Everybody was good. Kind of, you can kind of hunker down. And but I think about that time and how I, I went up and saw her. I talked to my grandma almost every day, but I feel like I missed out. We could have done more trips. We could have done more things together. So I could have got to know her even better as I was getting older. And this idea that I just had so many more important things to do and I just talked to her on the phone was just, you look back at it now and you're like, what an idiot. What an absolute moron I was. So when I convinced her to move down here because you know, my mom couldn't keep driving from Barry to thing and they moved down here. And, um, I remember she was at that point, she wouldn't smoke in the house anymore. And, um, they were renting this house and, uh, my grandpa, grandma was smoking in the garage and she fell. My mom called me and said, you have to come over. And I lived, we lived a block away and I came over and I had to pull her from these, like she was in the sort of laundry room. And I remember holding her and she wasn't really crying, but she kind of, she kind of lied into my shoulder. She'd broken her arm, by the way, her humerus clean through, clean through. And she just leaned into me and said, well, don't go anywhere. And the, the ambulance came and we went and she got fixed up. And I mean, she heals like, well, when I say she heals like Wolverine, I'm not, there's no exaggeration there. She's the woman up until 97 healed like Wolverine. But that moment of her lying there with her head into me and we were sitting on the, the laundry room floor is the only time I've ever felt like I could take, uh, the first time maybe I was, I was taking care of her. And I think we got closer, I think, but I think grandma also doesn't want to, she never wanted to feel like people had to take care of her, just that they wanted to. And I, I honestly believe that that was the best proof of our relationship because I was always, my grandma always let me take care of her 
because never for a single second did she think that I didn't want to or need to or or did I was I not doing that out of love not out of obligation never once did I do something with my grandma out of obligation and so I think I was one of the few people, my mom, listen, my mom took care of my grandma forever. I don't want to minimize that in the least, but they were a mother. Mother and daughters have different relationships and, and they were well-suited best friends. But for me, I think she let me take care of her. And, and then I, and then I would do the same. And you guys know how my grandma takes care of me. Get my purse, right? You don't say no to that. And I don't mean it like you should take advantage. I should I'd take advantage. It means like if grandma wants to buy dinner, let her buy dinner because it gives her, that's her love language. That's how she takes care. That's how she feels like there's, there's this thing, right? It's not just me taking care of her. Like she can still take care, right? And we'd have these talks. It's, I mean, it, guys, sometimes it's so hard because eventually she moved into my house, built a basement apartment for her and my mom so I could help take care of them. And this was, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago now. Um, and every day, every day, guys, it didn't matter if I came home at 2 a, like p.m., if I came home at work, at dinner time after work, if I went out and I came home at 1, I kid you not. My grandma was sitting out on my porch chair, and I still have those chairs. I don't think I can ever throw them away. Having a cigarette. And by the way, it could be 110 degrees or minus 130. She was still out there. She was still, like, if it was hot, fine. She'd say, it's lovely, right? If it was cold and windy, she had her hood up. She was, like, crumpled down into this tiny little ball. <laughs> Smoking. Talking about the birds. Talking about the neighbors. <laughs> Talking about, you know, what goes on on the street. And it was just so nice to be able to come home every day, walk by her, talk to her. Do you need anything? Live in the same space for her to know that I'd do anything she ever needed me to. And I never, ever would begrudge or feel any negativity towards any of that. And it left this beautiful softness to our relationship that I just don't, I don't know if she experienced with anybody else. So do I feel grateful for that? Of course I do. Do I feel this pit in my stomach of missing that? Of course I do. And I don't know if that's it. There was this weird comfort and consistency for so long. For, well, I'm almost 50. For 50 years, I could count on that person <clears throat> being my person. And, um, his first birthday. <sighs> now I know. Guys, she was 97. When was I expecting her to live to be 150? I told her 100, in all fairness. I said, can you, you, like, hit 100? I think that's reasonable. And she got sick. And she had to be taken care of full time because she couldn't get up anymore. And I felt all this guilt about not being able to do that because I was working and my mom was sick at the same time on a nightmare. Um, but I saw her at that place and I've talked about this before. It's a, it was a beautiful, beautiful place for her because my grandma felt, and you could tell instinctually that the men and women that were there took care of her with the same kind of maybe not love, but a, some love, to be honest, but that same kind of giving nature where there was no begrudging it. It wasn't an issue. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was just, there was just human connection and empathy and caring. 
And my grandma knew that. So she got to feel that by more people, not just me. And she'd forget things, right? She'd forget she's, I, I mean, probably earlier than that, when she was even living here, like she would start forgetting, you know, who people were or whatever. She forgot me one time. Like I went there every day, but she forgot me one time for about 10 minutes. And guys, I mean, I didn't try to like convince her of anything. I didn't, I, I think I did everything I was supposed to do just to make her feel good. But I don't think I've ever had a punch to the stomach like that before. Well, that was her. But, but that, that was only one time. You know? I don't know what the purpose of this was. Other than for me to be able to voice all of this stuff with you guys. You know? I know that finding people in your world, and sometimes they're blood relatives and sometimes they're not, but finding people in your world that you can be authentic, that you can sit in silence, that you genuinely want in your space because they just belong. That's family. And I'm lucky enough to have that with my mom. I'm lucky enough to have that with my uncle. I'm lucky enough that to have that with, with Anna and Rebecca. Like, I have those people. But the connection we had, I think, was built over so many years. And it was such a stable force. How could I not but feel a gaping vacancy with her not being here? You know, I go to casinos because I feel like she'd want me to, you know? And uh, I buy outfits. My grandma always liked seeing me in outfits. It didn't matter what kind, by the way. She always liked seeing me in different outfits. She loved my school pictures. There were certain things where it was just, it was the things in which we connected on consistently and laughed about. My grandma had this really, really great cartoon giggle. As why, for those who are watching, I got Gus Gus right here. It says, get my purse. And Gus Gus is a, you know, the Cinderella, Cinderella. And the way he kind of laughed, I feel like was always my grandma. But the fact that that laugh came out of such a gruff, British, put together, don't let her emotions get the best of her kind of woman. I think it just made my day. Well, it did make my day. So, on this February 12th, 2023, I want to say a very simple happy birthday, Grandma. I hope you can hear me, you can feel me, and I hope you had a great day wherever you are. Don't worry, I still got your purse. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you next Tuesday. Same bat time, same bat station. Good night. Dismissed.